A compound junction field effect, bipolar junction transistor current sync circuit example is discussed in this video. We want to see quickly how this circuit is functioning and then what is the output voltage V out because of the current that is passing through the resistor load RL with a nominal value of 4 kilo. At the very left side, we have one n-channel junction field effect transistor, JFET, that is setting up the current for us properly. Uh, of course, we need to figure out the right value for R2, given the nominal R1 of 2 kilo. Then, when we have that current that is passing through the first PNP uh, BJT transistor that is in the diode formation, and then that would set the current for the emitter for the mirror PNP transistor that a portion of it is then routed to the next current meter to finally get to the output current that is a current sink. So let's quickly do the analysis. For the junction field effect transistor, the information is IDSS or IDS uh, drain source saturation current is uh, 4 milliamp that is given to us and the pinch off voltage for the JFET is minus 4 volt. So what is the meaning of that? That means uh, when we have, let's say, drain, gate, and source of this N-channel JFET, the, in order to be in active region, so let me just put it this way, in order to be in active region of the operation for the JFET so that it operates properly, so if this is, let's say, the IDS, so this is IDS of the N-channel JFET, as a function of the voltage of drain source, if, let's say, for a nominal selection of the VGS, it looks like this. Uh, we don't want to operate in this region, of course. So this is the region that is the ohmic region, that is uh, the region we want to avoid. And the part is the active region that we want to operate as a sort of a good current, uh, let's say, source or sink in this example. Therefore, in order to be here, we need the gate voltage to be less than drain voltage by, uh, let's say, pinch-off value. So if pinch-off is 4, it means we want to absolute value of pinch-off, which means, in this case, 4 volt. So that's something we need to consider. On the other side, uh, or on the other hand, this is for a specific value of gate source. The maximum uh, value of VGS, or gate source, can be 0. That's when we get the maximum current, which is... So the max IDS can be IDSS, which is, in this example, as I mentioned, is 4 milliamp. When we start from that level, so when gate source is exactly the same voltage, we get the maximum current, which is IDSS. But when we start reducing the voltage of gate, because we start having some current that pass through the resistor R1, which result in a voltage drop across R1, which will define voltage of gate below voltage of source. So therefore, gate source voltage will be a negative value. Then as a result, as VGS is dropping, IDS, or the current of the drain source of the JFET, N-channel JFET, starts dropping. And uh, when VGS gets as low as, let's say, pinch-off voltage, so when we get to negative VP, when we get to plus VP, which is a negative voltage for the n-channel JFET, negative 4 volt, then in that case, IDS becomes zero. So we basically um, turn off the n-channel JFET when VGS becomes as negative as the pinch-off voltage. We don't want to get there. So what we need to figure out what's going on here. Okay, so what I can say is, let's uh, do the quick analysis here. So what we have, I'm going to shift this portion to here so that I can write the equation for the n-channel JFET. For n-channel JFET, the equation in the active region, assuming we are here in the IDS versus VDS IV curve, characteristic curve of the n-channel JFET, then we have the current of the drain source equal to uh, the saturation current, the max current, 1 minus voltage of gate source divided by the pinch-off voltage, which is a negative voltage to the power 2 approximately. So we are making the assumption that this slope is practically very small, so very good current source. Now, we want to find IDS. We don't know it. We just know that this resistor is 2K, and we know that the, uh, the, the information about the JFET are these ones, IDSS 4 milliamp and V 
pinch off negative 4. So let's start from there. I can say, therefore, IDS that I want to find is 4 milliamp times 1 minus. What is VGS? VGS is the negative voltage drop across R1, because that voltage drop is with this polarity, obviously, so we have to negate it. V gate source is equal to minus R1 IDS. So that we know. I'm going to substitute that here. So minus, instead of VGS, R1 IDS. And for pinch off, we have negative 4 volt to the power 2. Okay, uh, R1 is 2K, so therefore I have IDS equal to 4 milliamp times 1 minus, uh, substituting R1 to Kelo ohm, we get uh, 2K over 4, which will give us effectively, uh, as if I'm saying, so 1 over 2, and then we have, in this case, we have Kelo times IDS milliamp. So the outcome will be milliamp. If we compute this and squared, of course, if we uh, solve this second order equation, which will, will end up to be something like uh, IDS squared, and we have, uh, we will have minus five IDS, and then plus four equal to zero. Solving this, again, the answer would be in milliamp. So IDS in milliamp. The answer would be IDS either should be um, uh, 4 milliamp if we solve this or 1 milliamp this is impossible so it's not a feasible solution reason for that is 4 milliamp is effectively IDSS so I'm going to highlight it here this one is the maximum possible current for this transistor JFET transistor that is given to us in order to be to have this that requires if this is the answer which is impossible that would require the VGS to be zero. So requires, and we know it's impossible. Uh, so because uh, when IDS is not zero, it's passing through R1 and it will result in some voltage drop across R1, which means VGS will be a non-zero value, a negative value. So this solution is not possible. And therefore the right answer is just one milliamp. Okay, so we found that the IDS current that is passing through this R1 and uh, also R2 in series, because there is no current that can flow or come out of the gate of the N-channel JFET, knowing that it's practically input, uh, let's say infinite input impedance. So there is no current that is going this way, or there is no current that is coming out of it, so milliamp. And therefore, we have the current IDS going through the series of R1, R2. Okay, so while we found IDS, which is of course the same current that is passing here, so IDS, I'm, I'm going to write it, which is, we found it to be, let me write it here. So this is drain, and IDS, we found it to be 1 milliamp, which is the same current that is going through the emitter of this uh, PNP transistor approximately, so 1 milliamp is going this way. So I'm going to talk about the mirror of that uh, through this uh, PNP transistor. Of course, knowing that these are two matched transistors in the same package, uh, so ba basically they have the same junction properties, therefore if they have the same emitter base for these PNP transistors, as you can see, the same emitter base voltage, then that would enforce them to have the same emitter current. So this guy has one milliamp, therefore this PNP also should have the same one milliamp current passing through its emitter. So I'm going to talk about the rest of it uh, in a minute, but let's go back to the selection of value for R2. So for R2, the limitation, as I mentioned, is we need the in order for this transistor, this N-channel JFET, to operate in the active region, uh, so that's the region it has to operate to be a proper current source, I need to make sure that the gate voltage is less than drained by at least absolute value of pinch off. So uh, to keep N-channel JFET in 
active region, not ohmic region. I need the voltage of the gate to be less than, or let's say, uh, if you insist, less than or equal at most. Let's say, um, prefer preferably less than voltage of drain minus the absolute value of pinch off. In this case, we are talking about voltage of gate being the voltage drop across resistor R2, which is R2, so I can just substitute then, R2 times IDS, that's the VG, voltage of gate, should be less than or equal. Voltage of drain is what? Voltage of drain is, as you can see, here is the drain. That is, that is uh, just the voltage of base because of the way that this PNP transistor wired as a diode, which means just 0.7 volt roughly below the 6 volt supply. So therefore, the base is roughly at 5.3 volt, roughly. And therefore, drain is practically for us approximately at 5.3 volt. So 5.3 volt. So that means 5.3 volt and minus the absolute value of pinch off, which is 4 volt, because pinch off is negative 4. Therefore, we get minus 4 volt. Okay, I'm going to substitute because IDS, as we found, is 1 milliamp. Okay, so what I'm going to get is R2 times 1 milliamp less than or equal 1.3 volt. So the lesson learned is R2, whatever value we select, should be less than or equal 1.3 kilo ohm. That's the requirement for R2. For example, we can select it to be 1 kilo ohm, and that's pretty fine, or 500 ohm. Okay, um, now that we are done with the selection of R2, I can go back to, let's say, this transistor here uh, that is now uh, passing 1 milliamp current through its emitter. So that is, let's say, the current of emitter, which is roughly the same current as the collection of all branches coming out of the collector. So assuming that these branches are designed to have the same effective, each of them, same equal area, in, in let's say uh, the junction area. So that means we are effectively routing one out of four of the collector to a let's say a measurement resistor for let's say monitoring purposes. There are a couple of uh, let's say uh, applications for this. Sometimes uh, in some designs uh, what uh, the designer do is routing out a portion, a small portion, a fraction of the collector current to a seg section of the circuit that does some monitoring or measurement. So the therefore, in this example, we are routing one fourth of the uh, collector current outside to another use case. And only what happens is via th this tree connection or wires, we are routing effectively three over four of the total current, which is roughly then I can say uh, by having a large beta, so we make the assumption that the current gain or beta for these transistors are pretty large. These are a small signal or a small current transistors. They have pretty large beta uh, on the order of 200, 300, or even 400. So with that, we can make the approximation that IC is the same as IE, which in this case is 1 milliamp. So in summary, 3 over 4 of 1 milliamp is going through here, so that would be uh, 0.75 milliamp. Okay, I'm going to just write it here. So that's the current passing through uh, this transistor here. Okay, so which is the, uh, let's say, emitter current of this NPN bipolar junction transistor. So we have effectively uh, roughly 0.75 milliamp. And again, it, uh, we make the assumption that these two transistors, NPN transistors shown here, are properly matched in the same, uh, let's say, package substrate. So they have the same junction and process properties, uh, PN junction properties. So therefore, if and since they have the same voltage of base emitter because the way it's connected, so VBE of this transistor is equal to the voltage of base emitter of this PN, NPN transistor. Therefore, is if in this current meter, if 0.75 milliamp 
is passing through this BJT, it should pass through this emitter of this BJT as well, so 0.75 milliamp which is then again because of the large beta of these transistors is also the same current that is passing through the collector, so 0.75 milliamp. And uh, then that is multiplied by 4K to uh, result in a voltage drop across this RL, VRL. So that VRL, let me write it here. So that voltage of uh, RL, or I can do it here, it's fine voltage of RL equal to RL, or let's say output voltage, why not just going one shot? Output voltage is the supply voltage minus the voltage drop across RL, which is then 6 volt minus, and then we have the current that is 0.75 milliamp, or 3 over 4, 4 milliamp, times the 4 kelohm. So... 3 volt drop across this guy. So VRL is 3 volt and then 6 minus 3 will give us output voltage is just 3 volt midway between the supply and ground. Okay, so that's the output voltage and that's how the circuit is operating effectively. Uh, the initial current is set up by the N channel JFET and then via a PNP mirror, BJT mirror, uh, a portion of it is routed out to the final NPN mirror in the circuit and then we have the current sink that is happening through the circuit. The output impedance in this case, including RL, let's say, if you're interested, uh, since the emitter of the NPN transistor in the meter is grounded, effectively what we see from the perspective of output looking into the circuit, we only see the, uh, the usual resistor that is between the collector emitter of transistor, also referred to as RO, which uh, from the uh, let's say IV characteristic of the BJT transistor is early effect voltage divided by the collector or emitter current roughly. So with that, we can say this is roughly, usually early voltage is on the order of 200 to 250, 300 volt, let's say 250 volt. And uh, let's say IC, we found it to be 0.75 milliamp. So I'm going to just write it there, 0.75 or let's say 3 over 4 milliamp. And uh, uh, that's pretty sizable, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a large resistor. We're talking about on the order of uh, 250K times 4 over 3, so times 250 kilo ohm. Um, we're talking about 300 kilo ohm roughly, uh, or even more. So we're talking about 330-ish approximately. So let's say roughly on the order of 330 kilo ohm output resistor from perspective of the collector of the NPN. But then that is in parallel with RL. So if somebody is interested in AC equivalent resistor, that output resistor is effectively, since the supply is AC ground, so RL in parallel with R out. So which then uh, 4 kilo ohm in parallel with with uh, 330 kilo ohm is just 4 kilo ohm. In. So definitely we can say that given this, then a final, let's say, output impedance is just RL, 4 kilo ohm. Okay, I hope that this example is, uh, this uh, compound JFET BJT sort of current sync, uh, sync circuit example is helpful in terms of illustrating how uh, we need to bias the JFET properly and then use it with combination of the PNP and NPN current mirrors to find the output current and uh, also find the output impedance. Thanks for watching.